Hi, welcome to The Coaching Game. I'm Laurie Lawson, and tonight my guest is Michael Mellon. Hey, Michael. Hey, it's really <laughs> good to be here with you, Laurie. Uh, yeah, I, I'm thrilled that you're here. Um, I met Michael at an ICF function, which is quite appropriate, but I found out through a friend um, that Michael is and was, and <laughs> was and is, I guess, mm -hmm. <laughs> would be the proper way, way, the right. proper way, was and is a rabbi and a coach. And I said, oh, I got to hear this story. I got to find out how this all came about. So thank you for being on The Coaching Game. Tell me a little bit about how did you become a coach? So really from the time that I've been young, that I was young, <laughs> uh, I, I've always loved helping people on their journeys mm. and really thinking about how they're different from me, similar to me, and uh, how they can figure out their way toward, wow. toward happiness, success, generosity. And when people would ask me, even when I was a congregational rabbi, when I was overseeing the North American youth movement for the reform movement or, or doing uh, uh, consulting and, and actually innovation coaching with, with congregations, I was always thinking about how I could help people on their journeys, their journeys. And, and that's, so it's always been this thread that I've loved. And, mm. and, and when I really started thinking about where I wanted to be focusing and what I wanted to be doing, it w became really clear that coaching fit. And so for a lot of reasons, uh, I, I s really stepped fully into coaching. Um, a couple years ago and uh, haven't looked back. Now, I, are they yeah. compatible? Do you do one, it, what, do you meld them or is it coaching or rabbi, rabbiing? Right. <laughs> is there such a word? Ra sure, <laughs> rabbi, rabbi. I don't know that it's a word, but I <laughs> well, use it. Well, let's make it. We'll right. make one. So I rabbi. <laughs> and uh, I, I would say that when I'm in a coaching space, I'm very aware that I'm in a coaching space. And I don't just work with Jews. I work with Jews, I work with non-Jews, I work in Jewish settings, and I work in non-Jewish settings or okay. secular settings. And so I'm very aware of where I am and who I'm working with and what makes sense in that space. And also what people are looking for. When I'm a coach, I'm a coach. And so maybe in a Jewish setting or in a particular space, there's space for uh, a, a blessing or there's mm -hmm. space for a particular story or teaching that I might not bring out in a, in a, in a different space. Um, so it, it informs me and my background and the work that I've done and the counseling and, the, and all of that, that informs me, but I'm really a coach in those spaces. At the same time, there are times I still do weddings and I still do mm -hmm. funerals and I still do some teaching and so that's a space where I'm a rabbi and it's very influenced by my coaching. And that's then there's so the fun. blend, yeah. right? Well, the that's places what I'm where I'm doing both together. Well, as a rabbi, there are prescribed rituals, you know, that right. I, I assume you could vary a touch, but not yeah. go way out of field. Mm -hmm. But then you have coaching where someone else is setting the agenda and anything goes, and you bring out a whole bunch of tools and skills to, to get it there. So the blend must be fascinating. The blend is really fun. And, yeah. and the reality is that over, I, I did my over here and over here and all, <laughs> but over here in that, the, the the rabbi specific work, I actually do have a lot of space to oh, be okay. creative, to be innovative, to make choices. And yeah, there's some different kinds of limits um, over there, but there's also some different kinds of work and that, that opens up how I, how I do it. How you can do it, have yeah. different approaches. Oh, yeah. I like that. Uh, well, I, I, I recommend that his um, website's on the bottom of the page that you check out Link's Coaching because he's got a lot of cool workshops going on and a concept of um, d establishing values, honoring your values, and bringing it all together. And in these, I don't want to, no, I do want to say these troubled times, because I don't think anybody can th pretend that, you know, <laughs> we're all Wherever united. you fall, yeah. it's, they're, <laughs> they're, it's, they're, it's Yeah, you're either on, on, you know, you're happy or you're not, or you're a little bit of both. But um, is, is this the kind of situation you would address, like bringing a group, um, a diverse, um, sometimes, conflicting group together? Is, is that part of it? Or do you take the individual journey? So I'll do, I'll do both. And, mm -hmm. and with, the, with the work that I've been primarily doing lately, it's been much more individual focus. But one of the mm -hmm. dreams that I have, one of the things that I'm 
hoping to put into motion actually is about having those kinds of conversations yeah. that perhaps don't start with the most challenging issues, but start with our stories, start with our values. Because mm -hmm. so often we look at the other side and we say, that other side has different values than me. And the reality is we have sometimes incredibly similar values. We either look at them or understand them differently, or we have them in different orders. And oh. so our priorities oh, like shift based on the order that we have oh. our values. I like that, that we all kind of have similar values, but we have them in, our, our priorities are different. So Absolutely. while you're working on career, someone else is working on relationship. And exactly. An, and on an individual basis. Oh, I like that. And when it yeah. flips, yeah. your journey <laughs> changes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, oh, well, that's the challenge, I think, taking people on their journey. But... And it's a it's a solo journey. We all know that, but mm -hmm. letting them also you can't you know you gotta you, there's no you could live in a cave, but right. <laughs> it's not it's not preferable. So how do you how do you take your journey and bring it out to the world and and live within the society that we're in? So absolutely fascinating, yeah. fascinating. Well, one of the cards um, we're talking about the points of view cards, of course, that uh, Michael chose was journey and. I, I think this card is interesting simply because it has two elderly hands on it. Mm -hmm. So you know that they're, and they're still on their journey, which is For great. Sure. Do you have a, I know you have a, a I won't say a penchant, but I say you're, I'll say you're brave enough to do some coaching with youth and people who deal with youth. <laughs> uh, me, I'm going to be like, whoa, okay, <laughs> good for you. Um, right, exactly. You go to that stuff. Yeah, so I'm glad you're doing that. Um, is, there, is there a gap? I mean, do you have an age limit or what is the different coaching youth than um, uh, leaders of companies? Well, I'd say that the, the tools sometimes are really similar the the work the the questions that are most common are are a little bit different it also depends on context so mm -hmm. if i'm working with somebody who's a leader of a company and we're talking about family and life and that part of the journey it actually some of the conversations even harken back to their teenage years they're thinking about who they were as a teenager and what their dreams were and what they were hoping for and where they wanted to be and how where they are matches and doesn't match with that dream. And teenagers are dealing with the same question. They just don't either know where they want to be mm -hmm. or they have that spark and really know what they want to be doing. They're not sure how to get there, what that journey is going to look like or or just how to get out of their space that they're in in the moment. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would say the work is, is different. Like that, that executive is, is, is just at a, in, in a different space and, and asking slightly different questions and the tools that you can bring and the challenge that you can put out on the table immediately looks different. I love that you said that. I remember one of my favorite lines, uh, Lenny Bruce was a hero of mine. I just, I thought, he, you know, I don't think I was there when he was around, but uh, I got the aftermath. And, uh -huh. and one of his, he says, we're all just running around going, look at me, Ma, look at me, look what I'm doing now. So right. yes, it's so much is shaped as a, and if you can't get out of that, I dare say a mini corporate leader right. is like, well, I'll show those guys. You don't want me on right. the football team, watch mm -hmm. this. I'm sure that that's all a part of the journey and we do carry it with us. Um, is that good or bad? Is, is that a good thing to carry with us as motivation or would it be to best to free yourself from the shackles? Right. So, so one of the cards we have here is freedom. And yeah. that's, that's, that's a big one for <laughs> Colorful me. Colorful and right. uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, it's, and, it's, and, and, I, and I love, right, the, the little girl swinging and we always yes. think about on freedom. The, on the carnival ride or the circus ride, whatever carnival, I guess, yeah. yeah. And we always think about, uh, not always, but so many people think about freedom as that, that opportunity to do whatever it is that you want to do in the world. Mm -hmm. And it sounds so simple to say, just yes. I'm going to do whatever I want to do in the world, but there, there are a number of challenges around that. And one of them is that so often we're in our own way, that we're holding on to oh, beliefs, yeah. we're holding on to assumptions, uh, we're holding on to patterns or behaviors, some that have served us really well up right. until a certain right. point, and then they stop serving us as well. Mm. They're there for a reason, all those assumptions and beliefs, they're there for a reason. And 
oftentimes those assumptions and belief that carrying around that, oh, I need to perform on this little kid, I have to show my mom right, or I have to show right, my dad. Yeah. At some points, that's really energizing and powerful and necessary. But there's a point where freedom isn't about continuing to pursue that, it's about being aware and making choices. Mm. If we're just stuck in our assumptions, our beliefs, or how we <laughs> flow, Right, it flows right to that other card, part. Right, uh, <laughs> we're we're stuck. If we're not, if we don't have the knowledge to to be able to make the choice, then we're just stuck. If we're saying all along, if we're not aware that one of our beliefs or one of our assumptions is, I need to perform for my dad or my mom mm -hmm. or my grandma or my guardian or whoever that happens to be, um, then we don't even know the choices that we have. And so raising awareness around that, that's one of the things that's so beautiful about working with adults, yeah. is when you can help somebody see, or they come to that realization, that this is a belief that they no longer need to hold. It opens up all kinds of possibility for them. There's actually a freeing in mm. that. So that's the freedom, the freedom of being aware. Um, um, opportunities. Uh, yeah. I think we chose that, or we didn't. Mm -hmm. We should have. <laughs> and, right. uh, Could have gone through the whole <laughs> we deck. Had the whole right? deck would have been great. Um, opportunity. I'm, I I love that. And yes, I I can see how that would be so applicable to adults because we do um, get stuck in patterns, and we mm -hmm. do think. And and you know what your parents thought you should do sometimes stays with you for the whole time until right. you realize. Wait a minute. I don't have to do this. Um, I also see this would be, and, I, and I'm not encouraging you, but if you want to, I uh -huh. also see this would be so helpful for the bullying situation that's going on now. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have to deal with that? Or do you deal with that in teaching people how to work with youth? Because I know you work with summer camps, mm -hmm. and you like that I do. a lot. I love yeah. it. I love it. I, uh, <laughs> and I would think that happens on, on, you know, especially away from parents and everybody mm -hmm. feeling insecure. I would think bullying would happen at that point or right. things like that. It's interesting. Um, one of one of the things when I work with summer camps that's that's surprising and different is that I work with really good summer camps, and actually most of the summer camps out there are, are doing are doing pretty pretty darn good work. Um, one of the things that's different is that the kids, even though they're supervised by teenagers, college students, mm -hmm. they're supervised so much more than they are at home. Huh. And one of that. the things that, <laughs> l that limits the yeah. amount of bullying is who's around and what's the messaging that's happening with, oh with them. So mm. I don't have so much that's going on. I have a, f I have a five-year-old and a nine-year-old, mm. so we talk about <laughs> bullying and how right. to deal with it and w how they can help their friends and how they can stand up for themselves. Mm. Uh, but a lot of my work is about when I'm, when I'm working with uh, adults who are working with kids, is about what is my responsibility in that space and what's the messaging that goes on and how does what I do and say impact how they communicate. And this, by the way, is the same message for, for an executive Absolutely. as it is for a camp yeah. counselor because we know that the people around us pick up on our vibe, on our energy, on our moods. And so the organization or the group that we run uh, is directly, not just in, in big picture, which it is, but day to day, moment to moment, mm -hmm. affected by the person with the most power and their moods and how they behave and how they communicate. So that's one thing that's really big is the modeling that happens in there with, with kids and around bullying. But yes, it's wow. huge. I see it playing out in lots of different ways. What a message because um it, it's now it's now gone to the adult stage, and right. and a lot of people out there are feeling bullied and and um, frightened, uh, mm -hmm. and I love that. So you're saying that, and I've been saying this. It's like, yo, okay, you might be depressed about what's going on, but one person, one day at a time, take right. it. Out. And it's like, so you're saying whatever message you're you're bringing out. What and I love what is your role in this in this scenario? What mm -hmm. can you do? It's not that you. You sit back and go, okay, we'll, we'll wait and see right. if it gets better. It's take an active role. And how does that play in, does that also play in the person's journey and their goals? I mean, taking responsibility, how does that play? 
Oh yeah, uh -huh. I, 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 when when I think about how that, and I'm just checking, I, like the, the the question is about the the journey and their goals and how that owning it and mm. taking responsibility is that my reading? Yes, am I getting this yes. right? Uh -huh. Owning it, taking responsibility, noting that what you bring is has direct influence on everything around you. I think is very much about uh, your your journey and your and your goals. There's this funny funny thing that I think goes on with the the best leaders. On um, the one hand, they take a lot of responsibility on themselves. They feel like they own it mm -hmm. and that they should be able to s make it happen and empower the people around them. And at the same time, they believe there's this bit of luck. Uh, <laughs> it's not all me, luck, yeah. right? It's not all me. Yeah. There's, this, there's, this piece th there's this piece that says, um, I'm, I'm here for a reason and my reason is because I'm supposed to be doing this work well, not yeah. because I'm oh so yeah. great and good. Uh, and, and so yes, I do think that that's very much about your journey and that stepping up and standing up for others feels like an, an important part of the journey as well because we talked about freedom. Mm -hmm. Freedom without generosity, freedom without a willingness to, to be responsible to other people, it, it, it can feel free because you're doing what you want, but it's a shallow freedom and it's certainly a shallow life. And yeah. so, so yeah. when you're stepping out and, and on that journey, like what a rich journey when you're aware of and conscious of how the choices you make and the behavior that you bring influences the people around you. Um, and the goals, how the goals that you set, yeah, of course you need to be looking out for you. Mm -hmm. For sure, that's huge. Think about Adam Grant and Give and Take, his book, Give mm, and Take, yeah. and, and how he speaks to this whole idea, yeah, you look out for you. you. You need to look out for you. But the people who are the most successful are also those people who are looking out for others at the same time, hands down. Wow, yeah. And, and I think it's back to, uh, that's why I think I was so fascinated with, I really want you to go to his website. Uh, I think I was so fascinated with all the workshops because I think we're back to values again. It's right. like, if, I'm not sure if you're free if you're living someone else's values. Right. And if you haven't, and, and that's not, and, and if you haven't even bothered to define your own, if mm -hmm. you've allowed your parents, society, mm -hmm. your boss, your, uh, your co-worker, um, your church to right. define your society, your society to define your um, values, mm -hmm. then I'm not sure that's a freedom either. I think that's, I don't know, that might be the core of my freedom, just saying, okay, right. these are my values, now how do I live them? How do I take care of myself with right. honoring my values? So, um, yeah. And I'm, a, I'm aware, I love that, that idea of the, of the, they can't define our values. Mm -hmm. All those different, the church, our family, right. our parents, our friends. If we allow them to define our values, then we're not aligned. We, we can't live that way. But I, but I do think one of the things sometimes we get confused about is the difference between being defined by mm -hmm. and influenced by. Sometimes we mush mm -hmm. those two things together. Okay. And I do think it's appropriate to be influenced by, uh, to make the choice, to hear it, mm -hmm. and to, to decide whether what's coming at you makes sense or not. Because sometimes we go through our lives saying, these are my values, this is what I believe in, and we don't make yeah. space to hear what might be possible. And so when we stop, listen, consider, and choose, we're opening up the possibilities of what it might be possible for what we value in the world, why we value it, and how that value acts out in our life. Mm. So, so I do believe in being influenced by thoughtful influence, not mm -hmm. just un, like being influenced without thought, but thoughtfully influenced by all of those different spaces. Right, I, I agree. I, I, I think religious um, upbringing is a fantastic mm -hmm. foundation. It's right. like, okay, that's your foundation now. Right. Branch it out, move it forward, take it back, yeah. whatever you want to do with that, you know. I'm with you. And, and yeah. think about that. And, and that's a difficult thing because some people will go, well, it's in the book, you right. know. And it's like, okay, but what are you going to do with it? How are you going right. to take that message and, and apply it to yourself and to others? So, mm -hmm. uh, 
Yes, and and I love that you keep including executives because I keep excluding them. But it's and I have a saying that executives are people too. They've got these <laughs> feelings. They've got right. these goals. They've got more limitations, I think, mm -hmm. than um, in some ways. Yeah, your regular everyday person because they they can't always even admit they have emotions or anything. So, mm -hmm. it, what what are the biggest challenges in the coaching that you're doing? today with with because you're doing a lot of executive coaching right now right mm -hmm. I am what are the biggest challenges so uh, I think that one of the biggest you you named in some ways that there's not space for for the executives to be human <laughs> to be yeah. human yeah uh, to and, and I actually think some of that is is their making in a belief system and in some systems, there's no question. They ca like an executive, to be successful in that system, what's expected in that system mm -hmm. looks really different. So they need to find those spaces to be able to let that guard down. And in other systems, it's about figuring out how to do it in a way that's authentic and works and can work in the system. Mm -hmm. But yeah, one of the big ones is this, is, is that idea of how, to, how can I be, be me? Mm -hmm. and feeling lonely exactly uh, they, yes. that I don't have especially the, the top executives feeling like they they don't have someone to either express what's really going on mm -hmm. or or say I don't know what in the world to do in this situation or simply to, to brainstorm about an idea because if they feel like they they don't have the answer it can be mm. intimidating by the way this is with summer camp directors who have been doing it's it for true. years and years and years <laughs> it's, it's true. clergy and it's not-for-profit executives and it's for-profit executives now i would think clergy would be exempt let me tell you why because they always kind of go to the book and go oh well it says you know but i i hear what you're saying their personal journey how do they mm -hmm. take it through this maze of ritual and and history and common den, uh, denominators and and problems of today it must be you're right they must have an awful hard time right. figuring out how to how to get through that and guide other people also right. <laughs> and you can imagine the same the executive who is on the road two weeks a month and the clergy person who is uh, demanded by different people in the congregation 24 hours a day, six and a half oh, days a week. Goodness, yeah. Th what it looks like on the ground might be different, mm -hmm. but the what the what the impact is on family and relationships, and health and exercise, yeah. and those spaces is is very strong, and so being able to talk about those things and uh, and, and and figure out how you how you work that out. Um, is is challenging as well, and a, and a rabbi who has an assistant rabbi, or a <laughs> or a priest who has the assistant priest new out of out of seminary, they're they're dealing with management and, and leadership issues too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what, and, and give us. And I know I do some um, reinvention coaching, and that would be like if, if you're retiring or something, mm -hmm. and people always go. I don't know. I don't know where I should go. What's my journey? Give us a tip on how to get your journey started or how to clarify or to, to get the path going, I guess. Oh, yeah. You, so one of the funny things that I always think about in conversations like this mm -hmm. is that I get to talk about all the things I believe and I know and I'm confident in. And, and the reality is that on each of these, there's some piece of it where I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Did I just and ask you a question on no, that? No, 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 I can, I can go there. But, <laughs> okay. but what I also recognize was something like, what's my tip for, for, for beginning yeah. your journey, for figuring out how to, how to name that? Um, it, it, I, I do feel like what I think about is really for, for me. Mm -hmm. um, and that different people come to this in, in different ways. Um, the, but as far as, as, as figuring out where, where to be on your journey, one of the questions that I go to is to think back to high school or middle school and think about your spark. And there's a, 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 a wonderful um, program out there called Spark. Uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. and what the researchers did who, who developed it is they went 
all over the world, and they'd ask this, this question of adults and, and kids, teenagers primarily. They'd say, so what's your spark? And the adults weren't, weren't always sure how to answer it, but the kids overwhelmingly were able to name what their spark was like that. They got it. I just got goosebumps yeah, because yeah. like that sense of they know their spark. And so that's, that's one piece is where's the space in your world? If you look at all the stories you tell about where you were on fire, where you felt great, where you saw something and said, that's where I want to be. That's what I want to do. What's the common denominator in there? That's, that's mm -hmm. a way to tap into that spark. And then, of course, the challenge is, so, um, so what's the, the step or who, who can support you or, or how do you need to adapt it? But that's, Adapting, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a whole other thing. But, the, but identifying that mm -hmm. spark can be, can be a, 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 way, a way to at least begin to, to take that, to make those small steps and, and, and do that experiment. I love that because when I'm doing, and, th and sometimes this is with people who are 65 and older, mm -hmm. and they go, I don't know what I want. You know, right. it's like, go back to your childhood. What uh -huh. made you, brought you joy? Well, I wanted to ride my bicycle every day. And it's like, right. okay, what can you do today? I uh, know you're right. not going to get on your tricycle and ride out, but, right. and and how can we take that forward? So I'm um, good, you've reaffirmed it because it was right. like, uh, go find out what, where you're, I love the spark idea. Go mm -hmm. find, go get your spark and um, see how you can keep it going yeah, yeah. so it's fun to see that yeah now do people when people come to you do they know that they're on a journey or do they know that they need to start a journey or are they just like generally well, I don't know something's wrong here Michael so in general I don't know that they would dis use the language of journey right you're though right. though some point. people are very sp are very clear mm -hmm. that five years ago they weren't ready to start asking these questions and be vulnerable and now they are and so they see how they yeah. they see their journey they see where they are as a business person um, they see where they are as a mother or a father and and they recognize that they're that they really are on that yeah on that uh, that journey um, and and it's fun sometimes they're not quite as clear, or they know they're on a journey, but they're not sure where they are on that journey. And that's where Michael comes in, and we right. have 30 seconds. Do you believe that? Wow. <laughs> I know. We just kept talking, and we could do this another. For sure. We could do yeah. Michael part two. Um, I want to thank you so much so for taking here. time to, to come, and I love the concept that you're doing. Um, I love the courage that you're showing with the people that you're dealing with, mm -hmm. and um, I, I would encourage everybody to really check out his website. It's quite impressive. Thank you, Michael Mellon. Thank you. So good to be here with you, Lori.